thank you everyone for coming to this very important session. I want to appreciate God for making today a reality. It is just by his grace, it's by his power that we are here today. Um, this has been a burden on my heart for the past um, few months now if not up to a year, but the body kept on coming um, since January and I couldn't hold it again. And I said, we must have a session like this. Um, this is the discussions platform and what this platform is majorly focusing on is to bring out the best from the youth or the young adults. Let's just put it like that in which I'm one of them. I want you to know that I might be part of the host of this um, group. I am also a beneficiary of what we've discussed on this platform. In one way or the other, God has used this platform to bless me. And I know we have so many um, testimonies, so many people that can testify to it. We thank God that today has finally come and I'm trusting God that today we change so many lives. With this event, we change so many people's destiny. It will make way for so many people. And God will use this program to liberate so many. Um, it's where we, we have this platform, we make it spiritual. And um, that's why we are going to start with prayer because we, we so much trust in God. Those who will win yeah, in everything we pursue, we must know how to bow before him. So in one way or the other, we know we acknowledge God. And I also want you to acknowledge God in all you do because the race is not to the swift or the, it's, it's, the battle is not to the strong. It's just the Lord that shows mercy. And I want you to know that when grace and mercy is speaking, it will be as if you are smart. But you yourself, you will know that your secret is the grace and the mercy of God. And let us just bow down our heads wherever we are. Let's um, tell God this evening that he will dwell amongst us. This has been burdened in so many people's hearts on how to get liberated. And we pray that today shall be the answer to their prayer. Lord, we commit this gathering into thy hands. We pray that God, you have your way. Come and be the host, come and be the chairman, come and be the director. All our guest speakers, Lord, speak through them. Let them speak what will liberate so many people. Let them speak your mind for people today to take them to their next level. And we pray that God, at the end of this session, we will have full cause to say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you so much. That's just my brief prayer. So as I was saying, the body kept coming and I've, I've received so many messengers, uh, Facebook messenger, direct message to me on how they can relocate from most countries in Africa abroad. And the only way I know is through education, maybe because that's the route I took and I won't be able to advise on other routes. So that has been my answer. But to be able to answer everyone, where I've studied all through my journey, I have PhD and I have several professional qualifications to the glory of God. I have not enjoyed scholarship or funding. It has been serve and serve and serve. That can be my own journey. But I have people that all their journey, they've enjoyed full funding. When I say full funding, I mean it. They've been sponsored in all their academics, and I engage my sister, a Dr. Raji, a Dr. Abidemi. I knew that when we were in South Africa together, it was on scholarship and I know he knows about this. And I want us to know that searching for scholarship or funding has a lot to do with your doggedness and the level of your connection. When I say connection, I don't mean you must be the child of um, uh, the president, or that's not what I mean, please. Your network, 
who do who is in your circle? Are these are, are these people the ones that really want to assist you? You know, there is a difference between giving one one answer or taking time to explain what you do. So that's what I mean. Building your network, it's really very important, and getting information. You know, there is a professor on LinkedIn, a very young chap, and Professor Rita Hodge. I used to read um, a profile, a journey, and it inspires me. She's someone who normally walks around the streets to even sponsor herself. And she got scholarship out of the country from Nigeria, let me be specific, now to Canada to study, I think for master's or for PhD. And now she's a professor and one of the first 150 women in STEM. So there's nothing that can limit you. So your background is not a limitation. Either you have money for someone to, you don't even need people to sponsor you. You can get this sponsorship. That's what you want to say tonight. And I won't take much of our time. We spent seven minutes now. Um, I want us to be pleased. If you have any question, this is where you can be helped. You can't just come here and uh, you have question bothering you and you won't be able to put it on the chat section. You won't be helping me or you won't be helping yourself, please. We want to receive feedback after these webinars, sharing your testimonies with us. That's the aim. We are not just wasting time. So please, if you have any question or all the information here, please grab them. With what is happening back home, I know everybody cannot travel out, but if you desire it, you can get it. I'm not saying moving out is the solution. If it is your desire to go and study abroad, you can get it. That is what. I want to say again tonight, and let that be at the back of your mind, that those going out of the country to study is not that they have the money. Some people, this university even pay their flight tickets, give them stipends, get money in return every month. And they, do, they did not pay any school fees, they don't pay anything. So I pray God will help us as we journey through this session this evening, that it will be an impactful session and very informative. I will hand over to Dr. Videli and Devayo to please coordinate the session. I've, I'm handing totally over to you because I've actually discussed with her that I'm going to hand over everything to her to please take us through. Please receive the honor to be the chair of this um, occasion, <laughs> or of this webinar uh, with your team. Thank you so much for bringing your team. Uh, Salaba, um, Thank you so much. I'm giving everybody doctor. I'm not sure if they are all doctors. <laughs> but if they are not, I'm giving them already. And they will be very soon. In mm -hmm. Jesus name. So over to you, Sister Biden, please. Um, don't assume we know anything. We don't know anything about searching and securing funding, including myself. So I, we want to know. We want to know, please. And our guest speakers, please, if you can share with us your email addresses on the chat session, so that at the end, if anybody is not still clear, I know you are people with passion for youth. I, I have moved with Sister Bidemi, and I know she has that passion. So please be free to chat with them on emails. Introduce yourself. It's one, one way or the other you will know yourself. So just introduce yourself and ask for that. Let them take you through. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Over to you, Sister Bidemi. I've made you a co-host. Okay. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you for the privilege to be here today. It's a great honor to be here, to be speaking with aspiring scholars. Like, I'll be calling you all scholars because I believe if you are... Can you hear me, Ma? Yes, we can. Because I believe if you join today's section, it's because you aspire to get a scholarship. If you did not aspire to get a scholarship, you will not even bother to join today's section. So I'll be calling you aspiring scholars because in the near future, we'll also be calling you scholars. I'm sure you win, you win a lot of scholarship because the people here with us, like you said, ma'am, Doggedness yes. <laughs> is one of the, it's, the, it's one of the qualification of everyone that have won one or two scholarship before. So I just want to thank you, Ma, for having the burden for youth, for having the burden for young and adults, 
have really benefited from this platform. I've joined several times and it has been a, 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 a benefit. It has really been something that has blessed me personally. So I wouldn't like to go into deep so that we'll, we'll maximize the time we have. So I will just call, I've also been like just coordinating it because we have people presently like utilizing this scholarship fund. And to the glory of God, I also did my master's and PhD on scholarship. But I will, I will love those people that are presently on scholarship to give us hints, introduce themselves, tell us bits, and please drop your questions. We might not remember to tell you everything about scholarship, but I believe that your question will inspire us and remind us of what we are supposed to say that perhaps we did not say. So drop your questions, just use the chat box, drop your questions and we'll be reading it out, we'll be answering your questions. We are loaded, we are here for you today. <laughs> we are prepared, <laughs> we are really prepared because we want testimonies after today's section. So please load us with questions and we'll be dropping our emails like just chat us up, we'll, by God's grace, we will assist in any way. So um, I'll be calling on uh, Alex. Alex, can you just briefly introduce yourself to us? Yes, good evening. My name is Alex Bimbo Notunji. I'm currently a student of the International Erasmus Mundus Program in Mediterranean Forestry and Natural Resources Management at the University of Padova in Italy. So, I am also a recipient of scholarship from both University of Leda and the University of Padua. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, Alaba Esther, can you please introduce yourself? Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm Esther Alaba, and currently I'm a graduate student at McGill University, Canada under the MasterCard Foundation scholarship program. I'm currently studying educational and counseling psychology. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Esther. Um, Adewi Anuluapo. Adewi Anuluapo, can you please introduce yourself? Okay, can Yetunde please introduce herself to us? Hi everyone, um, I'm Yetunde Rotimi, uh, a current graduate student at uh, Western Colorado University in Gunnison, which is in Colorado in the United States. I'm also presently benefiting from a scholarship through a graduate uh, research assistantship position. And I'm so glad to be here. Thank you everyone. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, An Anu, are you there now? Can you please introduce yourself? I'm not sure. You. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Hello, everybody. Um, I deal with Victoria Anuluapo. I'm currently an undergraduate student of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology through the MasterCard Foundation Scholarship Program. Um, I'm from Nigeria, Oya State. And currently, I'm also benefiting from the Chinese government scholarship at Shanghai Jiangtong University and um, the government scholarship at the University of the People. I'm a student of political science and Chinese at my university here in Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Anu. Thank you, scholars. Thank you for being here today. Let me start from Anu that's actually spoke last and I will be asking us a few questions and I want us to just elaborate on it. Perhaps maybe when we start discussing, people will start dropping their questions because I haven't seen any questions in the chat box. So Anu, I actually brought Anu in because some of us that want undergraduate scholarship, like most of us believed, including myself before now, that it's very difficult to get undergraduate scholarship, maybe because I did not benefit from undergraduate scholarship. I started benefiting from scholarship at the last year of my um, university, undergraduate university, then my master's and PhD. But Anu presently is studying political science in Ghana through MasterCard Foundation Scholarship. And she also is a recipient of a Chinese government scholarship studying. She's a, a lady of many things. <laughs> like I'm always telling her that I hope you will not just 
bump your head because she's doing political science at the same time studying Chinese, Korea, and many other things. And all these things, including computer science, and all these um, programs are on scholarship. So if you are an undergraduate student here and you want to get scholarship, you just need to bombard her these questions and she's going to answer it. So I'm just going to ask you this question. What should I do? I want to apply for a scholarship now. What do you think I should do? Where should I start from? So I'll be, I'll be calling on like in each person and any, anything you want to say, don't say what other people have said, just add to it. So what do you think I should do? Where do you think I should start from? If I want to apply for a scholarship, either undergraduate scholarship to study maybe any course or master's scholarship or PhD scholarship, I'll be including PhD scholarship. So what do you think I should do as a student, maybe a graduate student, I just finished from uni learning um, undergraduate and I want to apply for master's, for master's scholarship, what do you think I should do? So let me start from Alice. Okay, thank you so much. Um, for me, searching for scholarship uh, is really a great thing. But the first thing first is uh, you need to know a lot of information and uh, you need to be prepared for what you're searching for. For example, you need to know whether you're searching for a master's or PhD or undergraduate scholarship. You also need to look at to what level of scholarship are you looking for. For some people, if they have tuition fee alone, they are okay with that. And some want more of fuller scholarship. So these are some of the information that uh, you need to know. Then before you start searching, it is oftentimes advisable for you to get some document ready, your transcript, your um, degree certificate, your uh, reference letter, your CV, and some other document, your passport, international passport. For example, now in Nigeria, passport is like a good. It can take almost three months for you to get the passport. So you need to have these things so that you can increase your chances and uh, you don't uh, put yourself at a disadvantage. In some cases, you might need to write the English language test, but not everybody writes one. For example, I did not write one. So these are just some tips. Then, uh, if look talking about how do I search for it, I if my professor asked me for something the other day, and he said uh, I should tell him how do I search for opportunities. So I'm going to this is just for Microsoft Word. I'm going to try to increase the uh, font. Okay. Oh, my Zoom is about quitting. But before it quit, uh, can you see me, please? Yes, we can. Quitting. Okay. Uh, so there are four categories or different ways which I search for scholarship or for opportunities. One, you could search through emails. Another could be that. Uh, okay, please, uh, Mr. Bide, let me, Mrs. Bide, let me come back again <laughs> after uh, I restore my Zoom. All right, it's fine. So can uh, Esther Laba, can you just continue from where Ali stopped on how to search for scholarship? Okay, thank you. Yeah, in searching for scholarship, like Alex has mentioned, for me, what I did basically when I was searching for scholarships here and there, like Dr. Margaret made mention, like you need to network. Yeah, you need to make friends, get close to people that you have the same mindset. People that, that really that really wants to get mm. this scholarship of a thing. There is a saying that show me your friend and I will tell you who you are. You can't just work with someone that is aimless, that doesn't have a vision for his or herself. So that is why you need to network, move close to people that you think they can really be of help to you. And you can't just reach out to just one person and you feel like, oh, that's all. The information the person has might not really be complete. Move on to the next person, ask questions and you, you will get enlightened. For me, basically what I did, I subscribed to some mails, like I received weekly mails 
from uh, this, um, uh, if I could remember, uh, like I think I subscribe to like two or three. So weekly, I receive mails on scholarship. I go through it, look at the ones I, I think I'm eligible for and I, I can apply and things like that. Basically, that's what I did. And more so, I reached out to friends too. I told them my plans. This is what I'm into. This is what I'm, I really want and the likes. And day to day, they really flawed and even when they don't really have that mindset to I think I was able to influence them they also pumped into it and things like that so basically I will tell you you need to network with friends and like Alex said you I, I don't know if you said that and more so I yeah. use Twitter a lot go on Twitter you will see people that you can follow people in the academics you can follow people like that Olu Dayo Shokumbi is there in Canada as well I didn't even know him back then in Nigeria. I just do follow him on Twitter, things like that. He posts on he posts on scholarships, tips, and things like that. So I just follow and I read through. And there is another person I follow too on Facebook, Dr. Linda Hieme. She's actually good too. She she's good. She posts tips on scholarships and things like that. So I follow people a lot, people that I know that I can get value from them and things like that and you can also subscribe to uh all these I, 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 before the end of this session i think i will need to get in the the scholarship means i subscribe to so i can share with everyone so you get weekly updates on scholarships like that so thank you thank you so much before i call the next person i just want to come in briefly um, when it comes to, just to add to what Alice and Alabat just said now, when it comes to searching for scholarship, you know, I think Alice was about to list something like networking, emailing. I also had, okay, emailing, like connect with people, let them send you email. Scholarship position, opportunity for Africa are all those emails you can subscribe to. Like Esther just said now that she subscribed to some some positions, some opportunities, and they kept sending in our newsletter or email. So you can you can just browse through your Google, check scholarship position, check opportunity for Africa, and more that we are still going to share. Another thing is networking. Your net, I, I'm always telling people something. Your network, your network is your network. So when you follow, like for example, following Alex on maybe Twitter or LinkedIn, we help you to follow other scholars. When you follow Alex and you realize that, okay, Alex is following another scholar. You follow that scholar, you follow that scholar. Like, I follow a lot of people, like this um, Richard Orji that um, Dr. Margaret just said earlier. I followed her. I, anybody that I know that, no, this person is pursuing what I'm pursuing. I follow such person. Another place you can also get um, opportunities, like you can get calls, is through your, your mentors and uh, CVs. Like I'm always telling people, look at people's CV, check people's CV. Maybe you, you now we, we mentioned Alex, we mentioned Esther. If I were to be you, I would go on Google, I would search for their CV. Like I have a lot of people's CV. I have Rita or this CV. I have Ibala Joby CV. I have, I can measure a lot of scholars that I have their CV. I have my supervisor, my undergraduate supervisor, I have his CV. I have my master supervisor's CV. I have my PhD supervisor's CV. I have my mentors, like people that I felt these people are doing well academically, I have their CVs. And when I'm studying people's CVs, like you think I'm reading my Bible, <laughs> I study people's CVs, I check what, what particular grant are they applying for? What opportunities are they applying for? Which conferences are they going to? So those are the places you get like gl a glimpse to know what exactly you need to do in academia. Because in academia, you don't need to just sit down and fold your hands. If you want opportunities, then you need to look for the opportunities. Opportunities will not come to meet you in your bedroom. So you need to look, you need to be intentional about looking for opportunities. So most scholarship I apply for, okay, like this NRF, and also network with friends. Don't envy people when they are making it. When you see a friend got a scholarship, ask her, how did you get this scholarship? And also apply for the same scholarship. You know, my for my PhD, for my master's scholarship, I actually got information for my master's scholarship in a conference. I attended a conference and then somebody came to give a, a talk on 
um, on that on conservation biology, which is my field of interest. And she, after the talk, it was sharing opportunities where, where you can actually study free on that particular course. And I went to meet him after the conference and I told him, I, I'm interested in this scholarship. And he told me, what is your GP? I, I told him my GP and I was like, you can apply. And I started following him. I started updating him. I kept close contact with him and I applied for the scholarship and I got it. And for my PhD scholarship, it was a friend that got it. A friend just came to me and said, I got an NRF scholarship. And I was like, NRF scholarship? I went online, I searched NRF scholarship. And that was, I started preparing ahead. And I applied for the same scholarship and I also got it. And beyond, a lot of grants I've gotten, a lot of um, conferences I've attended has been free, fully sponsored. And most of those conferences, I always, maybe I saw them from, sometimes I, I, I usually saw them from the, from people's CV or people's um, like LinkedIn. I also followed people on LinkedIn. So any, any, anytime I download people's CV and I saw any opportunity, I write it down in my journal. So let me just stop there for now and call um, Yetunde. What do you want to add to that? How should we start for scholarship? Okay, uh, thank you very much. So to begin with, I think just as everyone has said, like they've all, everyone here has spoken well, like I don't even know, like we've all spoken well. Just to start from the basis, if you are willing to get a scholarship, I think you should be intentional. Just as Dr. Bidemiri already said, you need to be intentional. It's not something that takes a day job or no, you need to be intentional and determined about it. And one good thing I would always advise people to do is have a good, uh, bookkeeping record, that will I really put it. Like you can make this Excel file, you can have a sheet like somewhere or a book, a personal book, whereby you will use to indicate all the scholarships that you are coming across. Take for instance, maybe you're applying for MasterCard. I think Alice once provided something like that in form of Excel format, like it was in form of an Excel format where you can easily indicate all these things because our mind, there's a way our mind works. Like you, you, you need to be more intentional in, in the sense that you have to be following up with whatsoever it is that you are applying for. And whichever it is that you've applied for, you can easily tick it, okay, I've applied for this, what is next? That is first thing I would always like, be intentional, have a good keeping record where you can easily write down these things, note down these things. Then I wouldn't, uh, I would love to talk about the power of social media. Like we should not underestimate the potential of social media. I, as a person, I post, I, I posted something on the chat, uh, in the chat box. Once I'm searching for scholarships, like uh, there's this, I usually uh, type uh, search for graduate search assistant, assistant, assistantship position in social country. Yeah, that was another thing I would even talk about. Be intentional also in the sense that you know where you are going to. It's not every country you want to apply to. Like, okay, if it is the United States you are targeting, note it down, this is where I want to go to. If it is Canada, note that one down also. Then you can easily go online, you can go on Google, search which uh, schools in the United States are offering courses, like these courses that I want to go for. You can easily search for these schools. Afterward, you can go to each school's website or portal. You search for faculty members that are doing research or carrying out research related to what you intend to carry out. So as you are doing this, keep noting, noting their names down, note their names, note their emails. Afterwards, I would go on LinkedIn, go and search for that faculty member, follow the person. Because these people, they usually like post it on LinkedIn or even on the school portal that they are looking for uh, graduate research assistants or um, teaching assistant or whatsoever. So these are the uh, easy ways that you can used to actually note those people like track it's not as if like you are uh, is this stalking them or no you're not stalking them you're just following them to know what it is like maybe they have available positions in which you can easily reach out to them for so that was one thing then twitter i've often heard about twitter twitter is a very nice place to to get to know meet people to get to network and then following the right source of people such as this dr lumo you are that uh uh, Miss Esther already talked about. There are many of them like that. There's also Adiola and the likes. They're always like posting available positions and the likes. Then WhatsApp, join relevant WhatsApp groups. I could remember when I was preparing for GRE then. Immediately I registered for, for my GRE. 
there was this group I was uh, added to. In that group, like we would always like coach ourselves, solve questions and the like. So you can easily join uh, WhatsApp groups, also relevant to WhatsApp groups. Then if you're a person that also wants to, uh, that you're targeting scholarship, there are some exams that you might have to write. Just as I've said earlier on, once you go to those schools websites, you will see their various requirements. Some of them might tell you, okay, we want you to write GRE. We want you to take TOEFL or high ELTS. Like they have their specific requirements. And meanwhile, it is not all schools that demand this. That's why I said you must have your record, like where you are noting all these things down. You can easily notice that, okay, this is the school I want to apply to. This is what they are requesting of me. This is the deadline. This is, the, like you can easily note those things down. Some schools would ask you to take uh, to evaluate your results worse. They will ask you to evaluate your results, but not all schools does that too, just as I'm trying. It is not all schools that would ask you to do that. So uh, that is another means of preparing for uh, this scholarship opportunity. And just as I've said earlier on, it is not a one day or it is not an easy task. As I would always tell anybody I'm coming across for the very first time, you must be dedicated and determined in uh, carrying out this task if you are really ready for it. Yeah, I cannot to it later, but for now, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Um, Dr. Bidemi, before you continue, there's something that is just coming into my mind now that I think majority of us here might be people who wants to really leave uh, maybe West Africa and go outside the country. I also want to have that, what is your aim of looking for scholarship? There are so many aims. There are some people who want to move out of the country to go and study and from there relocate. So if that is part of your aim, you don't want to go and study and go back home again. You want to go and study and find a place that you can settle and be a legal immigrant. That's what I'm trying to say, that you need your information about all those things. Okay, if I study here, would they give me permanent residence? Am I eligible for this? All those information, as you have to know them. And by knowing, the way you can only know them is to ask people. By now, anybody who wants funding, anybody who wants scholarship, that does not, it is not on LinkedIn, on Twitter, is not yet ready because those are the places for professionals. That's the truth. Even up to today, as I'm talking to you, I'm not looking for scholarship, but I still look for people to follow on Twitter. And when I say follow, I follow intentionally. When they comment, when they post something that I know is important to me and my career, I comment. So that from there I network, I build my relationship. So we are not just on Twitter, we are not just on LinkedIn, we are not just on Facebook, if Facebook is relevant, just to be there to watch. You are there to network. That this networking is be bold enough to connect with people you've not seen with your eyes before. Be bold enough to introduce yourself and say your CV is relevant to what I am doing. How can you help me? How can you supervise me? How can you do this and this for me, period? So that is networking. It is not about, because so many people spend a lot of time on social media and it's adding nothing. So I pray God will help us. Don't let me take much of our time. It just flashed back to my mind. Thank you. Nay, thank you so much, Ma. I think it's also important. Like um scholar yet today says, just know what exactly do you want? Like, what do you want? Do you want to just study and relocate to other places, or do you want to study and stay there? And before I call um Adewi and I'll go back to Alex, somebody asked a question in the chat box, and I would like to about South Africa. Like looking for scholarship in South Africa apart from NRF. Yeah, you know, recently NRF. NRF is misbehaving, and I wouldn't even advise people put all their heads in NRF. I benefited from NRF, and it was fully sponsored. It was fully sponsored. My ticket, my visa application, everything was paid for during my time. That was 2019. But now I heard that NRF just sponsored, a, especially foreigners, part, partly. So I wouldn't want you to go into NRF. But apart from NRF, if you, if you want to apply to South Africa, if you want to study in South Africa on scholarship, I think MasterCard is also a good one. And we have two MasterCard scholars in our midst today. Though not in South Africa, 
in Canada and in Ghana. But MasterCard is MasterCard, I think, almost everywhere. And they're giving a lot of, they give cool funding. So you can apply to MasterCard. Master, there's MasterCard scholarship for in South Africa in Cape Town. There's MasterCard scholarship for, that is UCT. There's MasterCard scholarship for, I think, Rhodes University too, and uh, I think um, Pretoria. So you can also apply for MasterCard scholarship if you don't want to apply for NRA. Yeah, and there are also um, so and there are also other scholarship in South Africa apart from NRA that you can apply for. So we'll be sharing that also. So um, Ade, will you do you want to add to anything that had been said earlier? Alex, can you please continue? Okay, thank, thank you. I'll just uh, wrap up what everybody has said. Uh, for those who have not been able to follow the discussions via just uh, saying it, you can see it on the screen now. So uh, my professor asked me, how do I search for opportunities? And I emailed this document to him. So I've turned it to PowerPoint now. I use okay in my own case I use uh, up to four options for the emails and for this emails and uh, I'm a forester I look at uh, their website. Can you hear Alex? I don't think I'm I'm not hearing him here. I'm not sure. Same here, no, no man. We cannot hear him, please. Okay, I think his network is bad, man. Yeah, I think his network is bad. You know, it's not my network, so, it's my laptop. Um, I don't know what's wrong. Just do so without just... sharing. Do without sharing. Okay. Here is it. Yeah. So the the other one is website, which somebody already said you can follow some scholarship website. The other one is code email, and I saw somebody already write uh, a message. How do I write code emails? I think um, Scholar today will be able to answer us better. Other one is social media. For me, I'm a forester. I do just follow every organization online, on LinkedIn, on my Twitter, on my Facebook. Everywhere I have social media, I follow organizations that will benefit my life. Or that will share information that will benefit my life. So in that way, anytime I go online, I'm likely going to find some one opportunity or the other to apply for, except if they are not interesting to me. Then the other one is networking. Uh, my home view is that we rise by lifting others up. I share opportunities to others. Some also share with me. And with this, you don't know what information you might share to somebody and they could get the scholarship. Or they could get an opportunity so when you have information don't keep it just to yourself so and when somebody specifically asks me maybe for an opportunity i have a friend her name is esther she's studying mathematics i'm a forester so whenever i come about anything mathematics and i just see math inside it i will not even open the link i'll just forward it to her so that's one way of finding scholarship easier then the last one is social recruiting where somebody can just search you up online or something and it has been possible i have a friend in uh, kenya who was recruited via linkedin in my own case too i did not apply for a job in safe sahara network where i work before i got my scholarship after my nyc i just received a phone call a whatsapp call and that was the end because the boss or my boss already know my capability he knows what value i could add to his organization so these are some so it is imperative for us to share our career experience and impact on social media because uh, one thing i always believe is that no one can tell your story better than yourself so i hope with this you could have some few more ideas about searching for scholarship thank you hey 
Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. I'm still coming back to you and others. I do we I don't know if you are ready now. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I have to do some things on my laptop. Do you have anything you want to add to what other people said on how to start your scholarship? All right. So um, from what other scholars have said, I think they have said a lot, a whole lot about what it takes to search for scholarship, to apply for scholarship. I would just like to add one more thing that is grit. Um, for grit, like for, from my own aspect and from my own experience, I think grit is one important skill, or do I call grit a skill or attitude that you have to have while you are applying for scholarship? because it doesn't only deal with the intentionality aspect, but also perseverance, because there are going to be some obstacles on the way. There are going to be a lot of issues at some point in time. I know of a friend, um, when I got here to, when I got this MasterCard scholarship at Ghana, and then we were sharing our experiences, and he was telling me about his application at Sciences Po, France. Fortunately, coincidentally, we both applied for that scholarship at that same year, but then we don't know each other. And for me, I, 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 like, I was out of the scholarship at the very first stage, but he followed the scholarship up to the semi-final stage, and then at, at the end, he still, he still drops. That can be very like emotionally um, draining sometimes. Even me that I lose at the very first stage because of the amount of effort and everything I put into it, I cry. So not to talk of someone that has followed it up to the like second to the last stage. So grit is very very important. You have to be persistent. You have to have. You have to be passionate towards it. You have to be intentional about it, and you also have to be bold per se because um, sometimes it's very difficult for you to approach people when it comes to these things. I remember I had to, one of these scholarships, I had to look for the recipients online, just like others have said, and I had to send them direct messages on their personal social media platform. Sometimes it might, sometimes you might not get responses, sometimes you might get positive responses sometimes. Yeah, but that's where the grit comes in. You, whenever you get a positive response, you move on. Whenever you don't get a positive response, you move on. Whenever you get love letters from your applications, you move on and so on. And also you also have to, like the network aspect, I think um, Mr. Alice covered that part. Sometimes it's you, those within your network that send opportunities to you. There are thousands of opportunities out there, but sometimes you are looking for a particular opportunity, you won't just see it. It's not that they, the opportunity for that thing is not available. It's just that you, you are not in connection with the right people that will give you this um, opportunity. I remember the scholarship I am I'm on currently. It was Mr. Alex who sent the application to me. It was the first person who sent it to me. But I've been applying for several other scholarships and I didn't even see the application until he did and I finally got it. So yeah, and you also no, have to sorry, position yourself like for opportunities. You see some people, when you when you send applications to them, it looks like their CV is empty. They don't even know what to do. You like you see, like scholarship applications have different requirements. Some can be merit-based, some can be um, like different aspects of scholarship applications. But when you send scholarships to some people, they'll just tell you, this thing is too much. I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have, but you want to apply for scholarship. So, okay, if you don't have these things for this year, why not build yourself against the next day? But next day, you still send the same application to these people. I still don't have this, I still don't have that, I still have that. So you have to build yourself. That's like positioning yourself for the opportunity because like when opportunity comes, I learned this from one of my fathers, that when opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare. The best time for you to prepare is when opportunity comes. It is before opportunity comes. So that's from my side. Thank you so much. Please, I want us to note, I want us to note all this is so powerful. I will be talking on social media, then I'll come on preparation which I need just concluded, and I want all the scholars to also talk. But for now, let me just say something on social media. Please, I want us to make good use. You know, I think few scholars already mentioned that, and Alex also talk about networking. I want us to make good use of our social media. You know, a lot of us, we are in WhatsApp. Some of us are on LinkedIn, Twitter. 
But what really are we doing with these social media platforms? What are we doing with the LinkedIn? What are we doing with the WhatsApp? In fact, what are we doing on Facebook? You know, I was telling Dr. Margaret that recently I just uninstalled my Facebook because I was like, this is, this is not useful for me any longer. So I just uninstall it. So anytime I want to go to Facebook, I, I rather go on my desktop. That is when I'm on desktop. But I just install it, uninstall it from my phone because I need something that will actually add to my life. So what exactly are you doing on um, on um, WhatsApp? What are you doing on Facebook? Uh, Facebook? What are you doing on Twitter? What are you doing on uh, on um, what do you call it? LinkedIn. On WhatsApp, who are your friends? Which group are you joining? A lot of people have a lot of group they are joining, but none of those groups are adding value to their life. Like join groups on scholarships, join groups on join groups on what will actually add uh, value to your life. Don't just waste your data on social media. And for LinkedIn, I'll be talking majorly on LinkedIn and Twitter. They are one of those platforms that you get a lot of information from. But you need to, you know, I shared something on one of our group recently on selling yourself, like being humble. You know, there's something I used to call humility and humility. Some scholars, I, re I remembered, was it 2020 now, one of my younger colleagues wanted to apply for a scholarship. She graduated with a first class, a very good lady, like she graduated with the first class. She have everything that she needs to actually go and get a scholarship. But I think, thank God I'm talking to Christians now. I think sometimes we Christians, we feel like we are humble. We don't want to brag. We don't want to be proud. And we, we, we just hide some virtue that we have. If you actually want to get scholarship, you need to sell yourself. You know, Alex says something that nobody will tell your story better. Like nobody will tell, nobody will say, ah, this lady, she's good, she's that. If you did not tell them who you are, so you need to sell yourself on Twitter, sell yourself. Your um, uh, introduction, uh, I know on Twitter, there's a place to introduce yourself. What do they call it? Is it background information or so? Sell yourself, tell them what you study. For, if you have a first class, you don't need to hide it. It's not pride. Put it there, first class in so, 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 so. On LinkedIn, like there's a place where you build your profile on LinkedIn. Okay, recently I've been, I've, I've just started, okay, it was after my PhD, I fully resumed on LinkedIn. And I think every day I go to LinkedIn and Twitter. So I get a lot of opportunities there and I send it to people. And I realized that there's this particular person in accounting. She is only sending job opportunities, but he will just tell you, just type interested and I will go to your profile and check if you fit that position. And I'm wondering if you have first class, you have ICANN, you have ACCA and all those things, but you, you did not include it in your profile. How will you, how will he select you? It will not, it will assume you don't have it. So even if you're on LinkedIn, build your profile, sell yourself, like build your profile on LinkedIn. If you have first class, put it there. Those educational experiences you have, put it on your LinkedIn. If you don't know how to build profile, just get to us. We will share our own LinkedIn with you and you go and look at it. Or other people that are doing well on LinkedIn. Build your profile, build, put all those online courses you offered, put all those um, conferences you offered, put all those um, first class and a lot of things you get, put it there. It is not pride to actually sell yourself. You are selling yourself. Because when people want to employ you and they check through your LinkedIn profile and nothing is there, or they check through your CV, like Anu said, they said, send me your CV. You say you want a scholarship, send me your CV and your CV is empty. They will assume you know nothing. And you know, sometimes your CV might not judge you. You might be very brilliant. You might be very hardworking, but it is not included in your CV. You know, when you see some people's CV, you'll be like, what? I have all these things, but I didn't put it on my CV. You know, recently Alex sent his CV to me. I think it was 11 pages. Like when people said, if Anu is just an undergraduate and a CV is like seven or nine pages, why? Because she included everything she had. Like, put everything on your CV. Don't, don't underestimate any achievement. Put it on your CV because they are your selling points. Recently, I got a big opportunity on Twitter. I've not been a fan of Twitter. Like, I'm not even a social media person. But after doing, when I was rounding up my PhD, I just had overheard from somebody that uh, you can get opportunity on Twitter and LinkedIn. I went to Twitter. I started following you, following you, following you, everyone I can follow. On LinkedIn, I revamped my profile. I put a lot of things I've achieved. I started going to LinkedIn. And you know, I just saw somebody post an op opportunity on Twitter. 
that morning and I sent the person message. Like, I think it was Alex that said it. Send them message. I sent the person message. And I, I, I told the person, I am, like, it was even, even after I said this out, it was funny because I told the person, I said, I am qualified for this opportunity. And you will not want to miss not giving me this opportunity. And I told the person a few things. It is not pride. And, you know, she was like, oh, when I just told her what I've achieved earlier, she was like, wow, since you are qualified for this opportunity, don't worry, I'm going to send an official link to apply, apply. And you know, when she sent official link to apply, I applied. And from there on, we started communicating and I got the opportunity. But if I had not sent a message, if I had not applied, you, and you know, after we, 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 we after I was selected for interview, and I still, after the interview, I still sent her another email. I said, I am sure this opportunity, I am, I still told her something. I said, I'm qualified, check my this, check this, this, I did this, this. I sent her links, check this, check this, check this. And you know, to the glory of God, I got the opportunity. Why? If I had not maybe joined Twitter, if I had not like, been proactive, and I wouldn't say I wouldn't want to want to like tell you be about positive, that. positive minded. Exactly. For the audacity you have to say I'm qualified, even yeah. if you are not qualified, you are qualified already. That's what I used to tell people. I supervise up to PhD level now. And I, what I used to screen students is ability to tell me you know what you want to do. You could see how she said she wrote that, in, that um, email to that person that I know I'm qualified. That means even if you are not qualified, you know you are sure of the little things you know and you have a teachable spirit to know more. So there are so many things to learn from this. And this age we have, there is no Christianity in about hiding what you have. I graduated with a mm -hmm. first class. I worked for it. God helped me. It is the work of mm -hmm. God. You, it, it is not pride. You just need to say it. Nobody, in fact, there are some jobs now that they don't even check CV. All they check is how you put your application. How you, they don't check CVs. They even check what you put in the application. And you know there are some applications that can take hours before you complete them. So it has to be very detailed. How to write cover letter. You know, I, I sent one of the cover letters I usually send to when I'm looking for a job. It's eight pages, cover letter alone, eight pages. You know, when I sent it to that person, the person will say, ah, is this a journal? I said, that is my, because I will pick each of your um, requirements and talk to it how I'm qualified. So when you want to apply for any funding or scholarship, pick all the requirements and talk to it, how you have met it. And I love what um, Anu said that, if you are not qualified this year, that doesn't mean that you have missed the opportunity. Why don't mm. you prepare yourself for next year? Mm. There is no, none of us that are speaking here, we failed before and we rose up again. So for the fact that you are not qualified this year does not make you forever non-qualified. Mm. So there are so many things to pick out from here. And from everybody talking here, what I can pick is just a push that I must get this. If there is that push that I will get it, you will mm. surely get it. If there is that push, mm -hmm. because there are some people that they will look for scholarship for maybe two or three, they got rejection letter for like two or three times, and they just, they reroute. You know what it's called? Re they just, they forget about it and they will be thinking it's just that God is not fair to them. No. Please, I pray God will help us, but we also need to help ourselves. Even if it is job we are looking for. There are so many, and that LinkedIn, I've gotten a lot of opportunities on LinkedIn without applying. I'll just receive mm -hmm. the private chat and they are not scams. Not all of them are, the, there are real ones that I have the offer letter. So it's, 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 well, they have not been scammed on that before, but I know there are scams. But your LinkedIn mm. has to be loaded. All those things, you have some professional certification, put it. Even if it is volunteering, you, did, you do during INEC or something or something, just put it. You serve in fellowship in school. It's part of your community engagement. Put it. I pray God will help us. Um, Sister Bide Miu, mm. Yeah, thank you, Ma. So I'll be talking, I'll be asking uh, the scholars questions on preparation. 
like like and i was be start i'll start first and i'll start from where i no stop one thing i noticed i've worked with young people like i've worked with a lot of people like one thing i noticed about young people of this generation is that we are so so lazy like we are so lazy we are so lazy and we need doggedness we need to be resilient. Like for me, okay, let me use example. We have, like Dr. Margaret said, we have a, we, 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 we did not get here now. Okay, for my, for my postdoc, I think I started, okay, let me start from my PhD. I started applying for my PhD scholarship, even when I'm not done with masters. Like I still have one more semester to go for my masters. And I started preparing for my PhD. I started applying, I did not even have results yet. I still have one more semester to go for my master's. I started putting in for PhD scholarship, like one year ahead of my completion. I started putting in for PhD scholarship. I wrote out all the list of the scholarship I want to apply for. I started applying, sending them emails just to familiarize myself with anything that can come, maybe rejection or anything or anything or what they need, what they will ask. So I started applying and obviously I don't even have results. So what I told them is, I'm at the submission phase. I'm almost done with my master's. And you know, they kept on some people like, oh, you, this is good, but this is what we want. But with all those things, I'm getting prepared for the next phase. I'm not yet in the next phase, but I'm getting familiar. I'm, get, I'm familiarizing myself with what I need for that PhD, that, or the scholarship I need. So I started sending emails and I get a lot of responses. But when I finish my masters I already got familiar with what they need i already have everything i need so i just shoot in and i think after i finished my masters a year after i got my phd why because i've started earlier even when i don't i'm not qualified, I I'm not qualified because i don't have the results yet but i just want to get prepared i want to know what it entails to get this scholarship and i remember after my before i rounded up my phd I think a year before my PhD, I started applying for postdoctoral fellowship a year. I don't even have, like, I'm even still writing my thesis. I'm still writing my thesis. I don't have results yet. I'm not even sure if I will graduate at that time. I started applying for postdoc, sending emails just to familiarize myself with what it takes to get a postdoc. You get, I said, and we got, a, like, for me, I got it. I, for my PhD, for my I have got a lot of rejection. So don't think like, oh, you, you get scholarship. You know, people, people celebrate you only when they see your results, but they don't know what you went through before that result came. I'm only telling people that all you need is just one year. I remember before I got my PhD scholarship, I got a lot of rejection. I applied to a lot of places like Australia, Canada, US, like I was just train the applications out, France, but one yes actually make me forget all other no's. So you will get that yes. I've got, I have, a, have people like mentees that just got scholarship recently. They, they almost gave up, but at the end they, 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 they pushed through and they got that one yes. So be dogged, be resilient. Like just tell yourself, this is what I want and I'm going to go for it with God on your side. Please don't underestimate God too. Prayerfully apply for anything you're applying for. And prepare. If you, if, you, if you applied now and you did not get it, write it in your journal. I think Alex sent a tracker. Use that tracker. Write those things in your journal. Like for me, before I even finish my PhD or my master's, I have, me, I am patient. Like I always said, I, do, I used book. I have a art cover, like art cover that I used to write everything I want to apply for. And I write the dates in front of it. But if you want to use Excel, use Excel. Write those things, write those scholarships and write the dates that you want to apply, write the deadlines, write what you need to apply for those scholarships or grants or anything and keep to date, keep ticking, ticking, ticking. And I know God will help you, but prepare ahead. And one thing is that when I said we youth, we are lazy. You want to apply for a particular scholarship. You know, I know there are some times that maybe you see the scholarship late, a day or two days or a few days to that time. That is fine. But you want to apply for a particular scholarship and you already know about the scholarship, maybe three months ahead, but you did not apply for it till a day before. It is not too good because you're not the only one applying for such scholarship. A thousand, millions of people are applying for the same scholarship and you just submit your own scholarship. You just started preparing a day. You know, my, my undergraduate supervisor taught me something. 
if you want to apply for a grant or a scholarship, like start reading about it. If you are not even applying, you are just reading about it. Sometimes I want to apply for a particular scholarship and I kept studying it. I will just be reading about the scholarship, reading the instruction. Because sometimes when you read, like your eyes see faster than your brain, you might meet something. But if you read that in tomorrow again, you read it another day again, maybe you prepared one month ahead and you kept reading that thing, you will keep understanding what exactly they're talking about. You know, my undergraduate supervisor taught me something that when you want to apply for a grant or a scholarship, you keep reading that thing and preparing documents for it ahead of you applying. Keep reading that particular call. Maybe you want to apply for MasterCard. Don't just jump into application and just start writing. Read that MasterCard instruction guidelines. Read the guidelines. What did you need? You need TOEFL, write it down. You need transcript, write it down. You need a um, CV, write it down. Keep reading about those guidelines, instructions, eligibility, read about it. Go to what I do again is that I go online, I search for people that already want this scholarship. I look at their LinkedIn pages, Twitter pages. I want to see their qualification. I want to see what they actually have. Why did they get this scholarship? What did they have that I don't have? Perhaps I will start preparing. If I don't have it, maybe I can also get it. Is it publication that they have that I don't have? Is it that community services that they have that I don't have? I will use, use all those periods to start gathering those things I need to apply for the scholarship before bumping into it. Okay, Sister so, Bidemi, you know, what, what I would also love to add, sorry for cutting you, you know, I received so many emails from people and LinkedIn chats for me to write a um, reference letter for them. And from there, I picked some weaknesses from our people applying. If you know you are not good at writing, I'm not condemning you, I'm bringing a way forward now from what I've seen. If you want to write, um, what is that um, letter of intention or what do you write to show that you want to apply? If it will take you to send it to someone to proofread for you, there's nothing bad in it. If it will take you to share with someone you look up to that you know that they are good with writing, so that, you know, first impression also can, can last so long. If you want to write an email to someone, you know, you know, greeting, no salutation and all that, the English is not smooth. So in fact, some people are not patient enough to even read all those things. So that's what I also picked, that if you know you're not really good at writing, maybe that is the starting point. You need to work on it to be able to write smoothly so that you write convincingly. Then choosing references. Who are those people? Because I know I've read from Professor Rita Oji so many times that don't put someone as your referee. Someone that um, for three months, you don't just put people, please, let me permit me to speak that English like that and hard O at the back. You put people to write referees for you, those that you know, that these ones have passion, that they will contact them and they will respond. He said it's possible for people not to respond and that opportunity is gone. So don't just put one uncle or just put one Lecturer, if you know that that person will not do it, look for another person that will do it. I've done it for people based on my own direction, maybe by the Holy Spirit. I know people don't write for people they don't know, but I've written for some people I don't know if I'm led to. So and what I'm just saying, be careful how you select your referees, even if it is job you are looking for. All those things also matter, no matter what you search for. If they need referee letter and nobody is presenting or the person who this writing referee letter is telling them you are not teachable. It's contract, that, that, that's, that's a no-go area. So all those things also needs to be checked. Okay, over to you, Dr. Bidemi. Okay, thank you, Ma. I, I want other people to talk. Uh, if not, I have something to say concerning references and all the likes. But I think, I just hope I remember I'll come back to that because I've written references letter for, reference letter for some for people. Make sure those people also know you. If they don't know you, write for them and send it to them so that they'll be able to say a lot of things. Like maybe somebody did not know you, just know you online and you want the person to write reference letter to you. You can draft something about yourself and send it to the person and the person will revamp it and send it on your behalf. And please 
give your references or anybody that will read your motivational letter time. Don't just send letter to them today and say, please submit it tomorrow. They also have things they are doing. Give them time to read. You get, don't just send letter to them today and say, please, please, ma, you need to send me back tomorrow. They might not respond to you again. Not everybody have good art like us. <laughs> I will try because I will not want you to lose the scholarship because of me, but some other people might not do that. So let me ask, let me just read those questions in chat box. Then I will ask um, Alice to talk about, I mean, other people to talk about preparation. I'm sure Alice said something on preparation earlier, but people haven't joined then on transcript and all the likes. But I want to read those questions out so that we can attend to people's questions. Then we'll go back to what we want to discuss. Please, what is the hope of someone that graduated with a 2 2 and was not close to first class? Yeah. Uh, I will call Alex. I will maybe, okay, I'll ask uh, Roti Me and Alaba to also talk about it. But I'm calling Alex because Roti Me graduated with a first class and uh, Alaba also graduated with a first class. So Alex graduated with a 2 1, not 2 2 2 1, but I think he has worked with people in that stage. So he might be able to say a lot of things concerning that. So, Alex, what advice will you give to this person? So, oh, thank you so much. Uh, my first advice is for you to read the application itself and know what is the requirement or the benchmark. Sometimes some scholarships are so bent and they said all we want is a first class. So if you know you do not have enough time to trade away, I would not advise you to apply for something that says all they want is a first class. Then if they said we are looking at the academic qualification, in most scholarships that I've read about, your academic score will not take more than 20, 20 to 25 percent of the entire mark. So what I do or what I would advise is you can look at the other places where that 75 percent mark will be spread and see how you can boost up yourself in those places. For example, publications, conferences, courses, uh, leadership experience, funding opportunities you have gotten. Uh, you can package yourself and you can be the best. For example, when I got my own, I have uh, three points. I've even forgotten the score, but it's just around three, 70 percent. Three points. <laughs> Maybe three point six five or three point. Yes, it's not even up to three point seven. And I was the only one select. The scholarship was meant for just one master's. In my university is a Spanish university, so they have English language courses. So they, they have one for students who want to so for med for I was the one selected but I'm not the one who have the best of the grades but I also have other profiles and I also have other things I was doing I was involved in IFSA the International Forestry Student Association I was writing a book project I've been involved in several leadership opportunity i've organized quite a number of programs i think the cv i submitted to my university was about maybe seven pages or so at that time i just sent it everything though now if i were to apply i would not send any seven page cv anymore so but what i'm trying to say is that you can uh, bridge the gap between what you have and what you don't have you are the one to tell, sell your story better you mm -hmm. can sell your story at the point where you have your own uh, strength. You don't have to show your weaknesses to them on the screen. You just sell your own selling points. Everybody may not have a first class, but everybody can obviously mm -hmm. contribute one thing or the other to develop their careers or build their capacity and make themselves worthwhile. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I, I I have something very crucial to add, but I want to call um, Alaba and um, Alaba to add to it. Perhaps you have people in this ship and you, I know you graduated with the first class. <laughs> you, you might not have that experience, but you might have people in this ship. What do you advise? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Islam yet like for me, I would say two one first class two two. It doesn't really matter. Like others have been saying, you have to sell yourself and know what you really want. 
look at the opportunities before you if you're eligible if you're not you never can tell because you might feel you you haven't qualified like you have better people ahead of you you never can tell you can put in and there might see I, I can sense there are some things that all these scholarship boards look for in a particular scholarship program you never can tell because you, you you ain't there when they are making their decisions okay this is what we want to look into this is what we want to use to select their uh, candidates and things like that so just i would just advise people to just push in themselves and put in for it like a colleague of mine that we we are here together she didn't graduate with a first class she came here with two one and she was selected for the master card of a thing so I, it's not only about being first class sometimes. So MasterCard will tell you strictly first class or everything. But there are also uh, some criteria they might look into that you might really have. You might not really have the first class, even though you have a tutu. There are some criteria they might really bench like, okay, okay, if this person have this, we can, she can come in, he can come in and things like that. So I would just advise people to, uh, put in and then you need to prioritize some of these uh, applications when applying when preparing for scholarship you need to organize yourself you can't just see something today and you just say okay let me just dab into it apply for it no you need to organize yourself make plans okay i need to strategize myself apply for this and you prioritize prioritize it like I could remember when I was applying for the master card of a thing around 2020, yeah, it was after my service. It was, if I didn't even see, it was a friend that sent it to me, told me, oh, I had everything, I'm really qualified for this uh, scholarship program of a thing. I took it up from there, told me what to do and things like that. Far before then, I've been applying for several programs and things like that. I applied for so many programs and things. So I would just advise that people should organize and prioritize it, then get themselves ready in terms of document that was actually mentioned by Alex Elion that you need to get some things ready for yourself, like the uh, statement of intent, the statement of purpose, the SOP, you can draft out, you, you don't need to wait for scholarship program before having, like, just take time, draft out some uh, writings, make writings, your statement of purpose. By the time the, you have the scholarship uh, program before, you can just make a little adjustment to just fit in to what the scholarship program is asking from you and things like that. So I would just advise, like I said, organize, you prioritize, then you get yourself ready. So basically, these are the things you can do. And it doesn't matter if you have a 2-2 or you have a 2-1. There is always a place for you. Thank you so much, Sister Esther Alaba. Um, just to give, let me say, career advice now. I've been the university system now for almost 13 years of 12. So I think I've seen some things as a lecturer that I would love to share. And I would love to share some of my own story. Although I graduated with a first class, but for the fact that you have two, two, you graduated with two, two, ask no limitation on you. It depends mm -hmm. on how you see yourself. I'll share a story of someone with you. We met in our professional class. He had HND, not even two, two, he did not go to university. He had, um, he went through polytechnic and he developed himself. President, as I'm talking to you, is on his master's in Canada. There is no limitation that you have two, two, or even you have third class. It depends on what you accept as limitation that is limitation. I'm not saying because I have first class now that it's only for first class that's all. In fact, if you have first class and you didn't even develop yourself, I used to tell people, the fact that you have first class in your CV, expectation of people are really so high. What they, if, if you go for interview, I don't know if I have witness here, they will drill you in such a way that you must profess that your first class that you graduate with. So for the fact that you even have first class as not 
nothing to do if you have not even sharpened your skills. There are some skills you need to add on. You need to add on to your first degree. If you know you have two, two, or even if you have first class of, like for me now, I'm an accountant, look for professional exams to do. So add up to what, and I know for sciences also, you have professional, there are some membership that you can, you see, when you are serving, maybe we have undergraduate here, when you are serving, what do you do with the money you save? Because mm -hmm. all these things, <laughs> you must be intentional. You must know that there is a, that is a struggle, there is a fight, especially if you are from a poor background that you don't have anybody to give you money. You need to do so many things yourself. Sharpen your skills. Look for some webinars. There are some free LinkedIn learning. As you are talking now, I know not all of us that are here are on LinkedIn. Not, of, not all of us that are here are even on Twitter. Maybe okay, Twitter is more or less social enough. But there are some things you need to sharpen your skills. There are some skills, there are some le online learning on LinkedIn that you can put and add to your CV. There are some community engagement you can get involved in. Then the truth of the matter is, and what I want us to know is that there is no limitation to your life. It is the level you put yourself that you just operate at. If you are having the mind of moving the same pace with first class, you will also move with that too too. You will also move with that HND. You will also move with that. I started from OND. That's, that's just my own personal story. So it depends on what you really want. So there's no limitation anywhere. I know there are some criteria, but if you don't meet one, you can meet the other. And there are some that even if you don't meet it this year, there are some skills you can add up to meet it forthcoming year. The truth of the matter is for the goal to be achieved, you are not in competition with anybody. You are just running your own race that today should be better than yesterday. That's just what you are aiming at. I pray God will help us to do all this and to be to hit result for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ma. Uh, thank you, Ma. Uh, I'm going to call uh, Anu then um, yet today, but I just want to add to this. Like, it doesn't matter what you have now because you can't actually change what you have already. It, let's assume you don't have a tutu yet. You might be like, okay, I want to work towards having a first class, but you already have a tutu. You need to now look at, you don't need to stay in, 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 in the past. You need to not look like what should I add to this present thing I have that will give me a bright future. Like you, you, so one thing you should do, like she have said, check, don't waste your time on any scholarship that, that emphasize on first class or two one. If the emphasis is on first class, there are a lot of other scholarships that they don't emphasize on two one or first class. They will just tell you apply and other criteria that you need to meet up to. Check all those criteria. If you don't have it, like I said earlier, plan. Sometimes you can even plan one year ahead. I'm going to ask Anu to talk because she does that. I mean, she did that. She wanted to apply for undergraduate scholarship, but she had to plan, I think, one or two years ahead to get a master's scholarship. She have her own level degree was not very strong. Then what she did was that she had to go and write another O level. She had to write another WAHEC and to the glory of God, she had, I think, A and B in our egg. So she had to plan, like, plan ahead of what she wants to do. So she, she had to write another egg, and she had A and B. She took a lot of professional courses, a lot of um, free, uh, what did they, Coursera courses. I will ask her to talk, she, because she really have experience in this. She took a lot of free online Coursera courses, do voluntary services. She had to get a lot of things to prepare ahead for that scholarship. And she got the scholarship, and she has got a lot of scholarship after that. Why? Because she left like one year to prepare for that. So if you want to apply for a particular scholarship and the criteria is first class, look for another scholarship that don't really emphasize on first class. There are a lot of scholarship for two, two. You just need to add other skills. Like she said, maybe write papers if you need to get papers, collaborate with people, let them write papers together with people, do go for conferences, do online courses. We have free Udemy courses, we have free Coursera courses that you can do to add to your skills, voluntary service, community projects, all those things. Just do them and use them to prepare for those scholarships you have in mind that don't really emphasize on grade, but they want what you want up there, they want what you have upstairs there. Because not some people can even have first class and yet 
they can't defend the first class they have. So prove to them that even though you graduate with two two, like you have what a first class student did not have or even have. And I think I was applying for a particular um, a particular program in Stanford. And if you see the question they're asking in Stanford and one other university in the US, you know that they're asking you beyond your, 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 your grade. Like the question are so technical, like what exactly, what are your weaknesses? Why did you get those weaknesses? So those people want you to defend. You can even tell them why you get two one or why you got first class, or why you didn't get first class and prove to them that even though you did not have first class, you can deliver. Most people want you to deliver beyond your first class, they want you to do that. So add other skills and let them know that you have moved ahead of what actually brought you down, not to have a first class, and you can do better now. So I'll be, Anu, can you do that? Thank, Anu, you, thank you very much, Ma. So as regards to preparation, like I've said, I feel like it's very important to prepare yourself towards um, scholarship application. You have to look at, um, you have to be like general about all of your preparations and then during the time of application, you have to be specific towards applying the Then towards application, you have to be specific in the way you um, allocate those your know, prepared skills to each application. I don't know how best to explain because each scholarship application have different requirements. Like some scholarship are merit based, like I've said before, um, and some other scholarships, like the Mastercard scholarship, is not only about the merit alone. It also has to do with your financial background and then your leadership skills and all of that. So. Just ask questions, make research, ask questions from people that are experienced so that you know what and what it takes. One of the approach I also use is that I know what I want. Like I know that, okay, this is the, my field, this is my program, this is the type of schools I want to attend. This is the kind of opportunities that they have for this program in this institution. And then I look at the application beforehand. What is it that they ask and all of that? So I will cross check with all I have. If I see that there are some things that they require and I still don't have it before the application time, like next year, I will try to prepare for it. Because I know as I, I never thought of scholarship application until I I I finished. Like second school, I've already written why I can use like all the things when decided. And as I then I, I did not know someone else like seeing undergraduate in my why results. I'm not sure if it is, I think our network is breaking. Yes, it is. Okay, yeah, Tunde, can yes, you just, network is breaking. I want us to attend to the questions on the chat. So can you just tell us briefly what you want to add to it? And I will ask, there are very important questions in the chat box that I want us to attend to. Yeah, today, can you just add to it briefly? I, I don't understand, like add to what, which question? These two, two, I saw you send something. Okay, yeah, like people have said, you, you have said a lot, like you said almost everything I have here on paper. Like, yeah, it's just like positioning yourself, like uh, getting engaged in various research works. I could recollect when I finished from uni learning then, I just didn't want to stay at home. So I went back to Fring. Fring was where I had my undergraduate internship. So I already made a connection with one woman like that, one doctor in one department. So I went back there and I told her that I would love to come back, to come and work. Fortunately, she said I, I could come back. It was just because of the location and some other things. That was why I couldn't uh, resume back there. So you can engage in research work, even while you are waiting for this scholarship and the likes, because those are the things that 
your reviewers, your potential advisors, those are the things that they will look for in your CV. They want to know what have you been doing? What are you good at? So there are various organizations that are engaged in these things. You can search for them, not volunteer, uh, non-governmental organizations. We have the Sahara Network that is being organized by my uh, undergraduate uh, supervisor. And we have many like, like that, that you can search. They are consistently engaged in various research work that you can easily tell them, please, can I just join you to do this thing? Like all those things add up, like they are part of it. Once you can join them, carry out such, such um, research, then you, and you can definitely defend it. That is a part, like it's an added advantage. So I wrote that one down. Then engage in uh, voluntary, yeah, just as I said earlier, voluntary works. Like say for instance, if you are coming to the United States, one thing they, they, they really cherish very much is uh, the volunteering positions that you've taken up so far. Like you don't need to be paid for it. It might just be a free something, like just, just look for an organization that is doing something related to the path in which you intend to follow. Tell them you would love to work with them. Like, I don't even want to be paid for this thing. It's all a part of it. So that's another one. Then attend conferences. See, Tutu is not a limitation. Let me be sincere with us. Because even with my first class, I I I I I experienced a lot. I couldn't get offer. Like, because <laughs> me, I was a I was a kind of person that was just like focused on academic work, academic work. I was not really like spreading my tentacles to learn like from other, like to add other other events to my life. I don't know how really put it. So it really it it affected me a lot after I graduated. I couldn't really get the scholarship on time because I didn't have many things indicated in my CV. So it was afterwards that I had to start volunteering with organizations attending conferences. It doesn't have to be even be physical conferences. It might be the ones that they do virtual one or like attend conferences, take online courses. All those things are there, they are free. Most of these online courses are free. You can easily take them. And then one thing I would say, which is very paramount is um, learning programming languages. If you see most of the opportunities are outside today, some of them will tell you like, <laughs> they are looking for somebody that knows machine learning. Python, all these things. See, I, 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 even it was until I got here, like I did GIS when I was in undergrad, but I didn't really take it serious. What I'm doing presently has to do with satellite imageries, like drone imagery, like basically. So I, I have to start learning new things. Like don't just be, don't, don't shrink yourself, spread yourself, anything you can learn, all this R. That's what I'm making use of most for my ecological classes. Learn R, like I don't know for other, Courses, maybe engineer. I don't know what to, math lab. I think just like learn things, develop yourself before and even before these things come come to existence. Because once you have these things on paper, it will really motivate the people that wants to take you in that. Okay, this person is uh ready for this task ahead. And of course, yeah, those are the few things I have here on paper. Yeah, perfect, That's perfect. <laughs> you know, after my masters, with my masters, I had to start volunteering, free work because I want to get experience to apply for my PhD. Because I started applying for PhD after master's and I was getting rejection, rejection, rejection. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> so I had to check what exactly did I need that I don't have. And I realized that they're emphasizing on community service, experience, work experience and all the likes. I had to go back to Lorraine, went to uni Lorraine. I said, please, I want to work. Even if you don't pay me, I will work. <laughs> I started teaching, they're paying me 15,000 <laughs> with my master's. But I was teaching, I, I, I know what I want. I'm not really particular about the 15,000 that are paying me, but I know why I'm doing that. I know I'm doing it because I want to put it in my CV and I want to gather experience. So I added it to my CV, I added it to my motivational letter. I have taught before in uni learning. They don't care if they pay me 15,000 or not. <laughs> I started volunteering for one particular organization in my field, a um, um, Nigeria Bed Atlas project. Like I will work four hours free. I'm just, and you know, when I send email to my PhD supervisor, that was one of those things that motivated him that, wow, I know Nigeria Bed Atlas project. So yeah, involved. I said, yes. So that was what motivated her. Why? But that project is just free. I did it for one good year and I was just doing this free. But that added to my CV, added to my experience. So like volunteer, you know, Nigeria, all we want is money, 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 money. Everything is not money. Like volunteer, volunteer freely. If they don't want to pay you, go and do intern. Tell them I want to do intern. Don't pay me. Don't worry. I'll do it. If they pay you, fine. If they do not pay you, fine. But you're adding to your skills. Like your CV is not 
empty between one year and the other. And the, the people are like, what are you doing between 2020 and 2022? Nothing. Get yourself occupied. Do you get it? Get yourself occupied. All those things you're actually adding, you're adding to your CV. So let me just read other questions. And for Coursera courses, Anu, please, can you drop us links for Coursera and Udemy and how to apply for it? Financial aid, like she can actually send you samples of financial aid. Maybe she can just copy one of your uh, motivation for applying for financial aid and send it to the group chat in case anybody wants to apply for that. I know she has done a lot of courses. And for GRE, I think yesterday you did GRE, right? Do you want to? Somebody's asking about GRE in the chat. Yes, I did, I did GRE. GRE is what? Some schools will ask you for it, some schools will not. It depends on what you want. So you can either go for schools that are not requesting for it, or if you think this is a particular school that you want to go to and they're requesting for it, you can go ahead and write it. But GRE, I will not deceive you. It's not something that is. I see people getting high scores these days, and I'm like surprised. Where are these people getting these high scores from? Like, there's not something that is easy. I will not lie to you. Of course, God makes all things easy for us because we're a student. But hmm, GRE, GRE, GRE. I don't know. I would rather just advise target schools that are not requesting for GRE. And there are I'm many sorry, schools. Yeah, let me just... Yeah, you don't really need to... You don't really need it, yeah. GRE. It's not... It's just, I, yeah. did not do, I did not do TOEFL. I did not do IELTS. Of like, course, uh, of I, course, of I determined not to do it because I don't have money to do it. Money to do it, <laughs> I, I understand. So I told myself, whenever I want to apply for any scholarship and I see TOEFL and ITS cancelled, I'm not applying. So yes. I target schools that don't require TOEFL and IELTS or GRE because I don't want to do it. I told myself I'm not going to do it. So yes. if you don't have money to do it, if you don't have the capacity to do it, there are a lot of schools in the United States that don't require GRE and all those things. Am I right, yet on day? So Yes, they are right, but it depends on course again, because most engineering courses that I've seen so far, they usually write GRE. I don't know, maybe it's because of the, I don't know, maybe it's just because of their field of study, but most engineering uh, courses, they usually ask for GRE, they'll take GRE, yeah. yeah. But people like us, environmental management, no, 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 don't even waste it. Just look for schools that, that are not requesting for it. Yeah. I think I will add to that too, because okay. here in Canada, there are most schools in Canada, they don't really require IELTS. Just apply, like once you mm -hmm. come from, a, a, from an English speaking country and most of your results are basically in English, your transcript is in English, you are good to go, just apply. IELTS will be waived off for you, for most schools in Canada, yeah. Just few schools require the higher tiers results, so yeah. And 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 another thing for, for English proficiency, go to, I don't know for other universities, but for a university like Uni Learning, they always issue English proficiency um letter. So you can use that to support your uh, application instead of IELTS or GRE. That was what I used. Even though my NRF here in South Africa, they required um, IELTS or TOEFL, I did not submit that. I submitted my English proficiency. And you know, when I got here, people were like, wow, wow, because a lot of people don't even know you can use that. And you can actually motivate for it. What I did for my, during my application was that I submitted my TOEFL, my uh, English proficiency letter, and I sent email to my supervisor and motivated that. I've been studying for how many years now with, and true English language. And I told, I also that during my masters, like all my all my lecturers they are from developed countries, and I motivated, like I sent an email to motivate for why I don't need to write IELTS. So it's also it's also bogged down to you knowing what you want to do, you get and motivate for it. Don't you know? And learn from people either they are above you or below you. You know, recently I was speaking with Alex, and he said something. He said, "Ask question, talk to people you are." you applied to maybe your supervisor, don't just say, hey, how about if you did not give me? Ask them, tell them what you think you have, like, and why you think it should not be. If you apply for a scholarship and they, they, they ask you anything, tell them, I don't have, but I don't think I should have this. Mm -hmm. Just motivate for it. Don't be scared, like motivate for it. You being bold and confident might even, God might use that for you and prayerfully do everything you are doing, okay? 
So let me just read other questions. There, in, there are some questions I want us to attend to. Sorry. And, I think uh, so, so I actually had briefly to that. To. We've uh, talked this... about Tutu, we've talked about GRE, TOFU, yeah. Okay. So you have to search for, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can a second class or past? We can't hear her. I can't hear her too. Okay. I guess her network went bad. All right. But Let while waiting for her. Um, yeah, I actually wanted to add something that um, there is this culture that I've noticed from those that are, maybe we have some undergraduate students here that or they, they are yet to graduate. They are not really be free to talk to even your lecture be free to meet anybody and discuss with them so there is no it is only in one side of the uh world that so a, a teacher will be coming and you'll be fidgeting when you come outside you are friends but when i say you are friends you know with honor with respect you can be a friend to your superior you can be a friend to your lecturer to that supervisor so be free. Yes, to, just respect. Yeah, which you just need respect, but you can you can sit people down and talk. If there is no phobia, hey hey, it's coming and people are running. Not at this age again. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So, I think she's back. I'm sorry, I was locked out. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I was locked out. And now I, I, I can't even find the questions again. I was locked out. So I, I wanted to answer the question that says, can a 2-1 apply for PhD scholarship? Can you hear me, please? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can. Yes. I Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I was trying to answer the question that said, can 2-1 apply for PhD? Do you mean can 2-1 apply for PhD directly? If that is the question, yes, you can apply for, the, especially in the US, I think you can apply for PhD with your undergraduate degree, either first class or, okay, yeah, either first class or 2-1, strong 2-1, and having all those things we've said earlier, you can apply for, I've seen a lot of scholars on LinkedIn that actually got PhD scholarship directly from their undergraduate degree. So what they need to do, I think in that kind of program, you have to still do masters, but it will be matched with your PhD. So you can actually apply for it. And those scholarships are like the one that um, yesterday is doing, it will be graduate with graduate assistant. Even with Tutu, yeah, yesterday just confirmed that. Even with Tutu, you can get PhD directly. In as much as you have all it requires, like apart from the degree, you and you apply for graduate assistantship, I think so. Apply for the call. Get yourself prepared. Like, don't be debarred by anything. Don't be scared. Apply if you have all what it takes, apart from your grade. So I think you can get that. But now I lost my chat. Can somebody... Else, maybe Alice, can you just read those questions and we answer them? I think we have answered almost all the questions. Okay. I think it's just for any other person who have something to say. Maybe they can raise. There's a new yes. question on chat. Yeah. Sorry, I I have a question. Now there, there are some links that were shared previously before some of us logged in. How can we get it? Because some of my people are here. I invited them. I posted. I posted this um, for flyer in a group. So some of them are chatting me up to request for the link for um, the I think the Canada and UK or so. Yes, please UK just help. Uh, what will yes, happen please. is this um, event is recorded. So what I'll do is to send the recording to you so that you can share it on your group. Is that okay, ma? Okay, ma. That's yeah. fine. Ma. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. All the Facebook lives, I will do. Okay. Yeah.
So somebody also, I, I'm not sure I read that, way, but somebody asked the question on ASU or something. I didn't really read that, but somebody speak about ASU. I have something to tell people that are actually old up Nigerians that maybe in their final year or they're affected by ASU. It's an opportunity to develop yourself. Please don't stay with, don't stay and don't be idle. This ASU strike, go and volunteer. Like we have mentees here. Yeah. I think maybe it's here. Yeah. That is actually volunteering presently in IIT and he's doing very, very well. Okay, yes, he's here, he's here with us. You no, know? and he's learning a lot of things. Instead of you just sitting down and waiting for us to call up the strike, go and do volunteering job. Get a job, get intern, do ICANN if you are in social science, do professional courses, like build your CV within that one year period so that by the time you even ask to call up the strike, you, it will really affect you much because you have used that one or any year that you want to. Okay, so use those periods to what to get to get qualifications, certificates, experience. Don't wait for ASU to call up the strike because you don't even know when ASU will call up the strike. Don't allow Nigeria to just hinder your career process. So use those opportunities to do a lot of things. Is there okay. any other question? There, there is a question on Facebook, and I think there is a question here that if um, you resume. Uh, for the study, is it still possible to get scholarship? Maybe you've paid some partial um, school fees partly, and is it still possible to get some funding? I think that's what that person is asking. I think I should uh, answer. I also <laughs> answered in the chat. It's possible to get uh, some form of scholarship, but oftentimes I think it's something like an award. They could say Alex can you can award in this uh, department, this person okay. award in this department, and maybe they are oftentimes very small money. The cost mm. of living abroad is high. If you do if you or your family do not really have money to go spend there, you might want to consider before traveling abroad. Because uh, for example now, my cost of accommodation in my university in Italy. Two month rent is equal to one year rent. It's even my one year rent in Nigeria here with two rooms is even more. Uh, I mean, it's cheaper compared to. Oh, I'm trying to compare it. Two month rent in Italy is less than the amount I paid for one year rent in Nigeria. It's more. Okay, it's more rather. <laughs> so I am paying less. So the money I will use to stay in Italy for two months, I will use it to stay in Nigeria for 12 months. So you can compare the prices and the value of the money. So if you really do not have much money, it is not good to go abroad and suffer. That's my own kind of advice. Mm. Yeah, I, I think I want um, Esther to answer that too, because I remember recently it was Discuss, she was discussing with my husband on uh, um, jobs that she even have a lot of jobs that she had to tell some some she has to say no to some of those jobs. So I think you should say something on that. Okay, I think so. Yeah, responding to that question, you can source for funds once you get into the country or schools you apply to. There are internal fundings and there are jobs you can do. For me here at McGill, we have like some schools actually want students to, to flourish to once they get there, help them in terms of funds. Like I, there were two openings in the department, uh, teaching assistants. I applied for the two positions, but I had to reject the other one. They were even like, I should take up the second one, but due to my academic work and things like that, to reject the other one, like I can't take it up. Like I also have other things to do too. So I had to take up the uh, just one of the positions. So there are other positions you can do, the other works you can do. I don't know for some other schools, but I can speak really for Megi here. When it comes to exams, they make use of students for, what's it called? Uh, yeah, invigilators, 
you can serve as invigilators. There are, there are different work positions you can fit in, student fits in. We have a lot of students working, and basically that is what they use to fund themselves. Then in the departments, there, there are internal fundings as well, so you can apply scholarships, a lot of fundings in the department, is it the deans, awards, and things like that, so that you can use to sponsor yourself. So I can tell you, you uh, be rest assured, if you don't really have the money at hand, once you get the admission, apply, forge ahead and get in, you will get internal funding. That is just one thing I know. You will definitely have a way out of it to finance your tuition. And yeah, one thing I, I would say, okay, for me now, I will say presently I'm working full time right now because I'm on summer break and I don't have any other course to do during the summer till next fall. So basically you can work on full time, but during school, I uh, we are allowed to work for just 20 hours part time. So soon get involved in all these things to make monies and things like that. And summer is a very long period for like four months. So within that period of time, you work and you get some savings to fend for yourself. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I want to, a disclaimer to that too, so that people will not be, will not be, yeah, I want to just give a disclaimer to that. I think it depends on the uh, institution and also the state or the country you are in. So just to support what Alex said, in Italy and maybe in university, it's not possible. And here in South Africa too, it's very difficult. It might be very difficult. So some people, some people actually came to South Africa and got stranded, while some people got opportunity to work and do all the legs. But getting a job in South Africa is very difficult. So you might be frustrated a bit if you just come to South Africa and you think, okay, I will get job to find myself. You might need to check, do a background check before coming, like ask people in the department. So people get demonstration and TA2 in South Africa. Why some people in some departments, you will not get anything like that. But I know in physics and I think chemistry department, they get something like that. So I will advise that before you do such a thing, do a background check. Check the alumni in those universities or departments. Ask them, how are they doing? Can you get such? So do a background check so that you will be sure that, okay, well, if I should go to the US or Canada or South Africa or Italy, any country, I'll be able to get something to do to fund myself, even though if I'm coming to the state or to the country, with special funding, so that you will not get there and be stranded. Thank you so much. Please, if you have any question, feel free to raise up your hands or unmute. This we are in question and answer time now. Please, if you have any question, this is the time you can ask for that. Sorry, I want to ask a question. Sorry, I have siblings that are in Nigeria. Presently, we all know the situation of Astro Strike. Most of them are in engineering, mining, engineering. I have a civil engineering, I have accounting and all that. So, please, what advice can you give to them and where can you suggest? Some of them are in Lagos presently. One, one is in Exu, one in University of um, Akure, what's it called? Futa. Futa. And all that. So what advice will you give them? They are at home now presently. We all know. So what advice will you give them to, you know, better them? To better them, to prepare them for, you know, for their masters and all. I know we have said a lot, but I just want us to, you know, be specific. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am. All right. Um, my advice can be a bit um, funny. So let me hand over to Dr. Bidemi. What advice do you think we can give them? It's no, actually, even though it's funny, man, just say it. Yeah, it's actually a fun, it's, it's, it's an issue that we always bother someone's mind if you have passion for the future. You know, I posted something on my status three days ago about maybe it is true or not, it's a strike of like five months and not nobody is doing anything. And I don't just understand. This has been so... Are recurrent and so frequent. But as what they can do, I think Sister Bidemi mentioned taking up some volunteering job and all that. 
But the truth of the matter is, it depends on your desire. I'm not going to force my own desire on anybody's desire. If that person desires to leave the country, please plan your exit. And the easiest way to plan your exit is to go through study. I used to advise young people that reach out to me. For if you go and study somewhere, like my sister, Nalisa Alaba, you are working now in summer and you are studying. Do you want to tell me that you are not building your CV in the country? You are building your CV, you are having the experience already. If they need Canada, Canada experience, you are building it already while you are studying. That's two games. Mm. At the end of the day, you are not finishing your study and you are crossing to a better job. It is it's, it's just like that. With permanent... So if, if they desire to, if that's their desire, because not everybody can leave, but if they desire to leave, they should just start planning their exit now. As soon as they are told now, they even have the time to network. They have the time to, maybe you'll be sending data to them. This is the way you send data to them. So start opportunities, all these scholarships, if they're on their BSc, they should know that their master should not be in the same place. If it is their master's, oh, that's the easiest one. They should know that their PhD is for them to run. So that, 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 that's what I'm saying, my advice can be very funny. It can be very funny, you know? But I want you to know that there are some decisions you just need to no team, nobody is telling you anything. Either you have the money or not, you just make up your mind and you just see that God will work things out. God will definitely work things out. But you must know what you want. That's what I'm saying. If that is their desire, they should quickly, the only advice is to get occupied now and they should plan their exits for the future ones. If they for which. So that's just my little advice, which is... Um, Thank you, ma'am. Mm. Yeah, I, I think you've, you've actually nailed it, man. So they should just know what exactly do they want and what level are they now. If they are in their final year, you, you might not want yes, to Yes, final them. year. Yes, I have most yeah, of them that are might, in their final years. In fact, all of them, final might, year, that's They should plan are. for their next level. If they are in final year, they should know that their yeah. master's should be outside. Please send their, their, life, their life is very important. And if that way, if they still want, there are scholarships, they should just network and work their ways out. We are ready to network. It, I'm yes. sure everybody is ready. Yes, if they are in their final year, I think what they can do now is like Anno and other scholars said, this is the best um, time to plan. Like we used to tell mm. most of our mentors, now you have. I think even all of them that I that are that we, that they are our mentee and they are on as a strike, they're in their final year. Our suggestion or advice to them is get something doing mm. to build your skills and start planning for the next phase of your life. So what, what they do, most of them, they do some of them do voluntary job, some of them are already doing like um, either uh, community services or like I think one of them, maybe I'm, I'm going to allow him to talk if he wants to. Presently, is in his final year, uni learning. And you know what we just told him? Get something doing. And he's in IITA working as an intern. And you know, that period, he was even sharing the kind of skills, working with like global projects, all those things we had to see. The, by the time the ASUS strike come to their senses back and they call it off, he already have a lot of things to motivate to apply for master's. Like my niece, is in, she's in her final year now. She's also uh, caught up with this ASSO strike. Presently, she's volunteering in an organization, NGO. They're paying her. She's in her final year. Like she's not staying and waiting for ASSO strike. She's presently volunteering and she's doing her ICANN. She's in her final diet doing ICANN now. I'm sure by the time ASSO will call up their strike, she's already a, a chartered accountant. She has experience working with NGO. She has other skills, so she'll be able to prepare her head. I mean, she has been able to prepare her head using this track period, and she will just give her shots and apply for scholarship. So they should not yeah. waste the one They should, yeah, they should Dr. Bidemi, you see, let me just say that ability to see the future from today makes you stand out. So you just, by now, if they are in year four and they have sisters that are outside that can really guide them, just look at the place they are now and see what is happening in the next five years. 
So is, do you think there's still some significant change that you've seen that is, you know, if you want to see the change, it will be on ground. That you know, this thing, you know, when, when I moved for my PhD outside the country, I didn't even plan to move. There is this or this form from one form to another form to another form. And one day I just made up my mind that on you know, my master's then, I just made up my mind that I can't continue on this journey for my PhD. So you might not know what the future will truly look like, but you know that there are some things it must not look like. If you know you are tired of this waiting, 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 please network and also get scholarship and move. That is just the pure advice we can give. And to network and all that, this try period is not just to sleep and wake up. I know it can be tiring, but they should be engaged. They should be occupied and plan, really, really plan their exit. I have a hand here, uh, Dr. Fabili. Please, can you, um, okay. Can you unmute, ma'am? You've not sent your question. I can see one hands up, okay. All right. Can you ask your question, ma? I think our network is bad. Oh, so, okay. And she's not sending the test. Okay, any other question? And we would love to. Yeah. Okay, ma. We, we already shared our numbers and our emails. Like you can chat us up. I, we can only send you opportunities. If we see any, no. well, I've also dropped my own email so that it will. I think um, I prefer to drop my email. Uh, so and that means you can. My is the WhatsApp number, please. You can only WhatsApp me. Yes, so okay. I've dropped my email address. Please, if you want to, where well, I, I don't really know much about scholarship, but I can give them um, academic career advice or guidance. So my email is also on the chat session. Um, I Can think- stop that and sleep? Sorry, ma, ma, oh, yeah, move down, move down. Some, some people that are private chatting me and saying move that they're down, in forestry. So those in forestry, you can connect with Alice, you can connect with um, Yetunde, you can connect with me, you can also connect with me. So, but I just want to give a disclaimer Please, if you want me to help you to read your motivation letter, if you want me to like do something for you that as regarding reading or the likes, send me those things ahead of the deadline, please. Mm. So that I'll be able to put you in my plan. Because I've seen a lot of people after scholarship talk like this, they send me things and they're like, mm. please, can you, can you help me to send it tomorrow? Some people even send me the midnight and said, I need it before the day done. It doesn't work like that, please. Also bear it in mind that we also have something we are doing. So send it ahead, please. I'm going to try on my best, very possible best to help you to read or do anything you, you required. But mm -hmm. please just give me time. Don't send it and expect me to answer you immediately. And if you connect with me, by God's grace, I'm going to send you any links or any opportunities. So for forestry students particularly, we have... Um, we have groups that we can actually connect you with. If you're in forestry, environmental sciences, biological sciences, just give us, a, like, chat us up because that is our field, myself, Yetunde, and um, Alex. And for social science, you can connect with all the um, IFE and um, ANU, the social sciences. They'll have a lot of scholarship opportunities that they can send to you. But please know that those, some of them, they're in the US or Canada with time difference. So if you send them messages and they do not reply immediately, they are not ignoring your messages. Maybe they are sleeping. They will always respond to you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, wow, 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 wow. Thank you so much. I have a question on Facebook that um, he just gained admission to one of the universities in the UK. And we want to know if there's any uh, scholarship link for UK, do, is there any for scholarship link you want to share with us? Okay, um, we, 
okay, we have group, we have a Unilearn alumni group and we have scholars that um, are presently in the UK. So mm -hmm. we would, maybe I will share some with you, ma, or if, and if the person can chat me up, then I will share some, I will share with him or okay, her. Okay, that's fine. I don't even know the person is joining on Facebook Live. And if you share with me, I will put it under that person's question. And um, okay, okay is Dr. Fabi, are you on? Are you available now, ma? Mommy, for look at me. Are you available now? Okay, all right. Thank you so much. And I put it on the chat session that the networking starts now. If you have anybody you want to connect with, please feel free to start emailing them. And if they drop their email, just pick it. You are just getting your own information and continue the friendship. Follow them on LinkedIn, ask them questions. You know, this life is so simple. Um, no matter who they are, they are ready to help you. That's just the simple, um, they are very ready to help very you. Mm -hmm. And I also notice that there are even other scholars on this group, like there are scholars. I see Rashid and other people sharing information. So there are okay. other scholars on this group. So just yeah. network, like you said, man. Mm -hmm. And I will share, I will, I know I sent this flyer to so many people that they have one group or the other. I'll share the recording with them also. But please go through it. And the most important thing, why we gathered here is to see results. Don't just attend this webinar and close the chapter if you know you are really looking for scholarship. Get the information here and put them to work. And if it is also the career advice that we've given here indirectly, writing cover letter to search for job and all that, please put them to work. And the truth, the most important thing I will end with today is you just have to be determined. Make up your mind. There is nothing that is impossible. When you have God with you, you can move mountain. I see this issue of scholarship or getting international connections as mountain. But with God, you can summon that mountain and level them up and climb on them. So please um, use this information. If there's no other question, I think we, have, we are good to go. We've spent almost two hours. I just want to thank the, the scholars, like for, <laughs> I just chat them up and for them responding to me, even though they are, they are very busy, very, very busy. I know how I chased Yetunde up before she responded to me. She always changed her number like garment. That was what I told her. I know she's very, very busy, mm. but she still responded. So I want to thank them all. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Yetunde. Thank you, Alaba. Thank you, Anu, for responding. We really appreciate it. And we appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of myself and um, La on behalf of Lara and myself, we are both host of this, this discussion. Thank you so much, Dr. Bidemi, for connecting me with your, your friends because I don't really know the other guest speaker, but you linked us up. Thank you so much for making this a reality. And I pray that at every junction that we also need God's intervention, God will also rise up for us. Uh, we will not lack help. We will not lack anything good. Thank you so much, our guest speakers. And for all those that have attended, thank you for coming. Because I know if this information is for you, you are liberating. So many people might be liberating a whole family. You might be liberating a whole generation. We never can tell. And even if it is only yourself, you are even liberating. It's, it's fine. At least it's, it reduces the burden on us. So thank you to the guests. Thank you to every participant. If you have further questions, reach out to me, reach out to any of the um, guests. Uh, Mr. Taiwo Gumba, we are rounding up now. Can you briefly send your questions so that we can just um, say bye to everyone? I could see you are raising up your hands now. Okay, if she's no longer online, Thank you so much. Good, good evening, evening ma. Oh, good evening. Good evening, ma. Um, my question is, uh, is there scholarship um, opportunity for medicine and surgery? A lot of them. Um, a Those lot are lucrative of courses. Like, um, a lot of them. 
there will be a lot for anything else. Yeah. Especially with the COVID outbreak and, you know, all this ads. Recently, recently, I was even getting jealous of them because anytime I log into my LinkedIn, what I see is medicine, surgery, yes. parasitology, mm. virology. Mm. I was like, oh my God. You know, X and IT now, they are really artificial intelligence, robotics, anything X. There are a lot of scholarship for them. All right, Ma, please, how do we then connect with people that can um, help with these scholarship opportunities? You see, when you, when you uh, join Twitter, look for people whose area of specialization is medicine. Like for me now, the only people I'm following on Twitter are, okay, the spiritual father and those in accounting. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't have other times. Well, at times I follow news about my home country. So even on LinkedIn, so follow those people in your line. They will always academic post opportunities. Then from there you put you put it in you from there you see people reacting to their post. Then you from their reactions you get your own information. Yeah and another thing is we are you a graduate or you are still an undergraduate? I'm still an undergraduate, ma, a 400 level student of optometry. Okay. Okay, you have the whole time. Start, um, go to your, your supervisors, like your supervisors that are really doing well. Check their, um, connect with them on LinkedIn, you get. Connect, connect with them. I don't know if you have LinkedIn. I don't know if you joined this meeting earlier than this. Ma, I have LinkedIn, ma. Connect with your lecturers, your supervisors your mentees in medicine, in medical line, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on social media. Why I say you should connect with them is that they will have other connections that send opportunities. So if you connect with them, they will allow you to connect with maybe their friend. So start connecting with their friend. Connect with your senior colleagues in med medical field, like the alumni, connect with those people. So those people's connection will link you to another connection that will actually help you to see other opportunities. So start from there. Also use Google, just Google and say scholarship in a parasitology or a virology or your field, optometrist, anything. Things will come up, then you can start liking. All right, ma. Thank you so much, ma. Mr. Luwashim, we are taking extra time now. Can you quickly ask your question? All right. Good evening, ma'am, and evening. everyone in the room. Thank you. Um, I did like to say that um, it's uh, it's an impactive um, session. Um, quick one. I just want to ask a question about how do we network with those from social sciences? Because I am a graduate of economics from Ikiti State University. So I would like to um, network with those in the area of um, social sciences here. Thank you very much. All right, I will hand over to Dr. Bidem. I just want to advise you that um, for the fact that you graduate with economics, if you might decide to look for if you are going for masters, you, it's not compulsory you have masters in economics. Do you get what I'm saying? You need to also be able to predict right. the future now. You could see accounting now, we are putting data science in accounting. We are talking about fee techs and all that. So I just see that in to guide you further, that if you want to select right. course for your masters, please look for the next 10 years, what is selling, and add it to your okay. economics to build your CV. So what you can do, we've also said right. to connect it on LinkedIn, on social media, people have their CV, their profile, all these um, people that, you know, target your country, maybe US or Canada or UK or Italy or anywhere you want to go to, follow them. When you follow all them right. and there are opportunities, they post. You know, there are some universities that are in the advanced country, if there are... Uh, um, advert for post postgraduate they do it as an advert as if you are applying for a job both masters and phd yes. so they normally post oh. it on their wall but i'm also going to put a link 
If you are looking at um, UK, I'll put a link on the chat session. Uh, it's for master's, PhD, or postdoctoral or lecturing job. If you, if you want that, if that's your area of um, attention, you can also look at that link. Then career, indeed, all these opportunities also, you can like them and explore them. So that's the few things I can really share. And with what the guest speakers have also shared, I think you have the information or you listen to the recording again also, you have the enough information to go through. All right, man, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, thank you so much. It's as if we should not leave, but uh, we just have to call it um, a day. Uh, we want to give glory to God for bringing us together once again to have this event and to successfully end it. Um, we pray that everything we've learned today shall yield and germinate good food for us. Those dreams will come true. Uh, those good dreams will come true. You will not mm -hmm. be limited. And mm -hmm. I pray God will send you help. Your, none of the organs in your body will fail you. Mm -hmm. You will have sun heads to burn midnight candles if necessary mm -hmm. to, to, to you, know, you know, to run the race. The Lord will release unto us all. And mm -hmm. we pray whenever we shall hear from all of us, it shall be good news mm -hmm. and good news and good news. So we normally meet every first Saturday of the month, although by next month, we are not talking about scholarship or funding, but we have important topics that we discuss every first Saturday of the month. And the time is 7 p.m. Nigerian time, 8 p.m. UK time. You can join us. Those that have been joining us have testified to it that it's been a blessing. We are not just wasting time. Even if we are two or three, we, we are blessed. We, the most important thing is for us to be better version of who we are. And God has been helping us with good guest speakers that we have. So we would love to see you. And in order to crown it all, when I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God, and I believe that when you surrender your life to Jesus, you know, when you find Jesus in your life, you find everything you want. If you surrender to him, it makes things easy. I believe in grace. I believe in favor. I believe in God's mercy. You can submit your life to Christ. I'm calling you this evening to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Forget about sin. No, just forsake sin. Forget about any, any sin, anything that is drawing you away from your Savior. Submit your life to Christ. All those addictions. Make up your mind that you are just going to serve this God and put your life. Just, you know, you carry your life. I love this song which says, I put my life in your hands and I walk away. Just put your life in his hands and walk away and see what he will do with your life. All of us that are talking here, there's something that connects us together. And it's this Jesus that has connected us together. There's none of them that will share with you that will not tell you how God has helped them. You could see that sister from the U.S. She said, even with her first class, she couldn't get anything. Come and ask me. I was not funded by anybody, even with that first class. So that is not an issue of first class. It's about God adding favor, adding mercy to what you do. And I pray that as you surrender your life, God will keep you to the end. You will not derail. If you need any personal counseling or anything you want to share with us, you can feel free. And if there is none, please, I'll say bye to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Wow, 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 wow. wow. This is awesome. Thank this you. is great. Thank you so much. Thank God bless. You. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless you all. Amen. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome.